Welcome to the Magic on the Inside podcast by the Sisters Enchanted, where we chat magic, hot topics, personal development, and good old-fashioned life. Brew up something delicious and sit with us for a spell. Anna's singing as we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Magic on the Inside podcast. I'm Sarah, founder of the Sisters Enchanted, joined by my sister who doesn't see the countdown timer, Anna. <laughs> Story of my life. Co-founder of the Sisters Enchanted. That's me. It's not even like you just, because it gives you a countdown. It's like prepping you to be live. You didn't say you were hitting start. I did. I'm pretty I sure I know. did. Are you sure you didn't? You were singing to yourself, so how would you have known? That's, you know, that's a normal thing for me to do, to sing to myself. <laughs> Speaking of singing to myself, did you ever watch the video I sent you? I, no, I forgot I mean, yeah. until now. I knew it. I know. I I've, knew it. I, I just, yeah. Mm-hmm. My brain. Yeah, your much. brain. I'm singing to myself, and you think that it's all too much for your brain. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen up, friends. Friends and friends and friends and friends and friends. Two things you need to know right off the bat here. Number one, today we're talking about letting your tarot cards ask the questions. Number two, tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow. I'm pretty sure. I would double check though. At the website link that will be around this episode, I am teaching our intentional tarot class free. It's live. I mean, live, free, something like that. It's free and live. It's both of those items. And um, they're both accurate descriptions. It's happening tomorrow, so you can register, get the replay, and then I'm also teaching it one more time. And in Intentional Tarot, we talk about using tarot intentionally, obviously, hence the name. And also, you don't have to know the meanings of the cards, don't have to have them memorized, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for that in the free Intentional Tarot class. We will want to register for that yeah, full will. show. Okay, <laughs> now, stick around to the end of this bad boy podcast episode, because Anna and I will each... Do an example of allowing the cards oh, to ask the questions no. instead of us asking questions ready. and then getting the answers from the cards. I'm ready. So, Anna. Sarah. Anna. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we have found to be true, we've taught tarot. Okay, listen, listen some numbers. Tarot by the numbers. Listen. We have had 5,000, over 5,000 people take our tarot class tarot throwdown. We've had an additional several hundred people take our tarot journey program, which is now retired when that was in existence. We have had hundreds of people take our holistic witchery program in which we teach tarot. We have had 70 some odd thousand people register for our free tarot journal kit, taught tarot to tens of thousands of people in free classes. And live workshops. And live workshops. We have taught some tarot, (laughs) y'all. We have taught some tarot and we know... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what roadblocks people come up against. We know commonly asked questions. We know misconceptions. We know myths. And we know the way forward. I've been te- reading tarot for 20 years. And uh, so, and I learned tarot before it was a popular thing to do. Um, and I think that that was actually really uh, sort of a blessing because there was just the little guy, like the little sheet. Mine was just like a fold out sheet that came with the cards. And other than that, it's just stuff I picked up along the way. As opposed to this high pressure environment of like needing to know the card meaning or like when you're in a Facebook group and people share all these readings they've done for themselves and you're just over there like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do once I've opened the box. And uh, I think it can feel really overwhelming. Indeed. Would you say that's accurate? I think that that would be accurate. Yes, I concur. You concur? I concur. Oh, good. I was just, see, you're talking, and when you talk, I think about things, because I do that. And I'm just thinking about, like... Are you making your grocery list while I talk? No. I'm always always side thinking about, like, what you're talking about. So I'm always pondering things that you're talking about. So when you watch the YouTube video, and I'm sitting here going like this, I'm either singing a song that Sarah reminded me of, or I'm parallel thinking to what... Parallel thinking. parallel thinking to what you are talking about in my own world and life. I'm thinking about tarot and how you started and you, you know, had like your little pamphlet and tricksies. And I came into tarot. That I is going to be really loud in your earbuds. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that I started with astrology 
And so when I first started looking at tarot, I was seeing like the symbolism of astrology and cards and then like putting that knowledge and mythology knowledge behind that. I came at it at a different yeah. angle. For sure. Perspective. Perspective. It was an addition to my my practices. So, tarot was your your gateway. It was. And astrology and mythology was mine. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, have was, a, I was thinking about that. I'm fine. In okay. drinking my coffee just now, I definitely just swallowed one of my own hairs. And it's bugging me to no end. Like, I am <laughs> having an internal freak out right now. So, you were parallel, not thinking. I'm trying to contain so we don't have to stop this and start over. It's really getting to me. I mean... You could just pause it, it, and then we can come back and pretend like it never happened. <laughs> I'm dying inside. Oh okay. How oh did it get in there? I don't know. <laughs> it has a lid on it. I don't. I don't know. I'm like it might have come out of my hair because I just brushed my hair and then like landed, and then when I drank the coffee, I'm not sure what happened. But I need to keep it away from you. Oh my goodness! I know. <laughs> Can I just say, I mean, now that, now in my life, I definitely, my own hair falls out, and it's alarmingly green, and so I see a lot more of it now, <laughs> but, but when we were younger, Sarah and I, we lived together in Sarah's apartment, I was a, I was, I just moved in to Sarah's one-bedroom apartment, and it was, like, the worst thing that, like, I would, like, walk around to the bathroom, and Sarah's hair would, like, wrap around my feet. And I've always had long hair. It was, like, always the worst thing. And I didn't have and long, long hair out. as much until. Crazy. Yeah, my hair does now, too. Anyway. It's a long hair thing. Let's get back on track here. I just had to share that thought I was having, that parallel thought. Do um, so you feel better now? Yeah, well, I just drank another sip of coffee, and I think things are writing themselves. Anyway. <laughs> Um, fight fire with fire. Um, so allowing your cards to ask the questions is what you're talking about. So what we see a lot is people really trying to, un- to memorize card meanings and then force the force those memorized meanings or their attempt at memorizing meanings into a card spread that doesn't make sense to them either. So something that we see that really holds people back is having a card spread and then pulling cards in positions and then really being stumped. So if a position is like, what do I need more of right now? And then you get the 10 of swords or the three of swords or the 10 of wands and, you know, or like the devil. It's like, how could I possibly need more of any of those things? So if you're already not kind of in an intuitive relationship or confident relationship with your cards, and then you go using a card spread, that's like, You know, I can see how that can be really um, put people off from using tarot and moving forward with their tarot readings. So one of the strategies that we use, and we teach this in our tarot coach program, because we know that tarot is so much more powerful than just intuitive readings. So we have a whole program designed around tarot coaching and using your questions to be the guide, or your cards rather, to be the guide in your questions uh, and, and be more intentional with what you are, what you're using your cards for, which is what we're also going to talk about in the free class coming up, intentional tarot. So allowing your your cards to ask the questions. And when we say this, it doesn't mean it, like throwing the traditional meanings of the cards out the window or just bypassing traditional symbolism or all the things one could learn when really going in depth with tarot. It's understanding that and learning that over time but also allowing yourself to get really curious about yourself, the things that come to mind for you when you pull a card, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the ideas you haven't thought of before, and coming up with really challenging questions for yourself. And this was something that uh, I learned actually when I was a teacher, and I was uh, firstly trained to be an English teacher. And that's one of the things we really learned about was asking big questions. Uh, to understand what's going on and and thinking outside the box. And that's what we need to do with ourselves. We know ourselves so well that we're very used to thinking inside of our own box. (laughs) But if we can get curious and challenge ourselves to ask new questions about ourselves and our circumstances, there's way more growth that can happen. And tarot can help you do that when you use the cards to ask the questions. Parallel thinking. Um, You are also... swallow a hair. No. Oh, good. I'm glad to that hear that. That does not seem to be a problem of mine. Uh, uh. Not good times. 
<laughs> um, you're also reminding me of another chat that um, our astrology community has had recently, which is also a fun way to think of the tarot and learning uh, and what you're saying about kind of letting the cards ask you questions and kind of coming at it at this, I'm not a Sagittarius. I have an allergic reaction to that fire you just spit on me. No one knows what you're talking about. Sarah's got some essential oil blend that is for Sagittarius's, and I now am, I am now been anointed with it in her hair. Step back. It's like a potion. Okay. What are you doing over there? Oh my gosh. I totally just anointed you and, and covered me in your hair. <laughs> okay. So parallel <laughs> thing. Yeah. You're like you, 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 just you coming at you. You're gonna leave some green hair in your bathroom to so just wait and see. You can come brush my hair and do a good blow dry. Anyways, I <laughs> was thinking. If I if I'm just really on fire this week, you guys know why. It's I put fault. a spell on you, <laughs> and now you're mine. I'm sorry for, a, for everybody. <laughs> um, so I was thinking parallelly, parallelly. It's not a word. Was it? Parallelogram is. We you finish know. your sentence. Anyways, it's your fault. Um, that we were talking in astrology about how uh, we were talking about like transits and like the sun transiting or like the, where, where it transits over your chart. Uh -huh. And oftentimes people are so stuck on looking at like the chart first, just like tarot, like pulling mm -hmm. the cards and like trying to take the keywords, take, you know, the, the, the book meanings verbatim. And then they're like, that's not me. That's not happening. And in astrology I was like well maybe it would be really good like if you're doing like a like a moon or not a moon but like a sun transit that you start you know when the sun turns into the next zodiac sign and you start journaling about like kind of what's happening in your life for like a week or even just a couple of days and then looking back at your life and then trying to then throw the line to your astrology chart instead of like looking at your chart and being like what's going to happen to me this week or why am I behaving this week to explore yourself first and then find that in the chart afterwards, because then you're putting like your real life perception, your real life, what you just lived into that research. And then you have real life um, experience to draw on mm -hmm. to give that tarot card, that astrological placement more meaning, because it's like what you in your life can remember, stories that you can remember that when you're reading or helping somebody else discover something that it's that like real life knowledge mm -hmm. that really helps you learn more about those things and to have a more of a storytelling like essence to like your delivery yeah because you're not just little white booking or you're not exactly. just you know trying to be like oh well the sun in leo means this always you know what i mean like yeah. you're instead you're you're attaching you right. can be reminded of real life things. It just gives you yeah. more depth. All right. We want to do some examples. Sure. All right. Grab a our deck that's right over there. I need to be worried that there might be any hairs wrapped around this deck. No. Do you want half? Sure. Okay. So you want me to go first? Sure. Here's an example of what we mean by allowing <laughs> the cards to ask like questions. I'm going to shuffle. Shuffle the noises. You can sort of have in mind an idea as to what you want to think of. Or you just go in and be like, I'm going to investigate myself today. But say I was I was curious about, um, so in my own life, we're trying uh, this new kind of, it's like a virtual homeschool co-op thing, but it's not a co-op. It's hard to explain. And it's neither here nor there. But it's new for my family for the school year. So maybe I was like just thinking about that. You know, like, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Is it the right fit? Whatever. And it's just on my mind. So maybe it's on my mind and I want to pull a, a card. But here I pull the page of pentacles, the page of pentacles. Now, not even knowing, so I do know what the page of pentacle means, obviously, but maybe I'm going to pretend like I don't know what the page of pentacles means. And I'm just looking at the card. And the card that I pull here, it's a figure, this person's wearing a backpack. They're holding this disc, like a coin in They've their hands. really great shoes. Yeah. And they're looking out and there's like a city behind them. And so just looking at this here, I can start to ask myself some questions. Um, and in particular, me, the, my, what I was just saying about school and whatnot, 
uh, I can start to ask myself, well, what's it going to feel like to release control that I've had of my kids' education? And, you know, they have it on a backpack and there's this whole thing happening on this like world that they could be going to. Now, and that's a question I could ask myself, like, oh goodness, do I see this? Oh, yeah. Like, how do I see this progressing? Am I seeing this as an opportunity for my child? Am I seeing this as um, like, like she's going to move farther away from me now. But what, and once I start asking those questions of myself, that's a really curious question because this whole time I've had like a real stronghold on what my kid will do for school. And now I still do cause it's, it's still homeschooly, but it's somebody else really delivering the, um, lessons. Like I said, it's kind of hard to explain and it's not relevant to the example, but I could see it when I'm asking myself this question now you know, looking at this card, do I feel like, how do I feel about my kid having on a backpack and the, this opportunity of other stuff out there? And I can see myself just thinking that's a release of control that I'm releasing control that somebody else is going to know what's the right thing and that my kid is going to be able to keep up and be on that adventure and be responsible for the things she needs to be responsible for every day. Um, which then I could think maybe I haven't, let's pull another card here. Now I have the seven of cups, which is these cups and each cup is holding a different symbol and this person's looking at it. So maybe I ask myself the question here is, well, which of these symbols is, you know, if I could actually go through them and start asking myself, like, what does this symbol say to me right now? And making a choice as to which thought that I'm going to carry forward with this, or just along the way of asking those questions, identify a thought that I was having that I didn't even realize I was having to begin with. And now I've thought, and now I've, I've seen it, I've thought it, or I've acknowledged it. So as opposed to using, asking the question, what do I need to know about the school starting and pulling cards? I have just kind of maybe had an idea, something that's happening in my life. And I started asking questions based on the card that I was pulling. And that's such a strong practice. And it feels challenging at first, which is, you know, a good thing because you're really challenging yourself to ask questions about yourself, to think about your situation in a different way. All right. What's your example? Mine's a little more. <laughs> um, I was kind of thinking of just my state of wellness and well-being um, as like Sarah knows and most of team TSE, the Sisters Enchanted know. I'm on a little bit of a mental struggle bus. There's a struggle bus. There's a struggle bus. And so 2021, the whole team has been on a struggle uh, bus. Mental str yeah. So uh, different struggle buses, but our struggle yeah. buses are all riding next to each other on the highway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a caravan of struggle buses. <laughs> some of us have flat tires. Yeah. Some of us miss our steering wheel fell off. Um, some of us are like back up and running now though. It's like, <laughs> it's not me. So, <laughs> it's not me. So I was just thinking about like that feeling, you know, and kind of like, why is that a consistent feeling? Um, and I got the six of wands, which is really interesting because then I look at that and I'm feeling like very struggle bussy in my mind, in my feelings, like in my, in my gut. And here's this person being like super confident, um, super aware, looking like they actually have a lot of support in this card. Um, and looking like they're really ready to take things on head first, um, and also while knowing the traditional meaning of the card to me, um, it just looks like that they're like really ready to take things on with their team of support and make their way through. What I'm also noticing is the personal self-confidence of the person in the card and maybe thinking to myself, why am I not feeling that way? And also because this deck is super amazing that this body type is one that's closer to my own right now. And how that person is so confident in their selves and has this very, you know, direct, ferocious look to them. And I can see a little bit of myself in that card. And it's not really reflecting of my inner feelings. And why am I not feeling that way, even though I oftentimes appear to be that way? Mm. Like, how am I, why, even if I carry myself this way, do I not feel this way? Mm -hmm. So it's making me think of myself and I can, like, see myself in the card. But, like, what is preventing me from, like, really getting on that horse and asking my support system, like, how can I help be a leader here? How can I help, you know, 
move us forward. See how you came up with these good questions? Yes. How can I help you, leader here? How can I help move forward? We so much want answers. We so much want answers. But but asking good questions right. is what helps us get good answers. Right. Because you've got to ponder that about yourself. Like, why are, am I that. not feeling that way? Just shouted that. Yeah, that's right. And then I pulled a secondary card, too. And what's really funny is you pulled the seven of cups. I pulled the six of cups. And in this card, it's obviously very much like um, a very family oriented card that, you know, somebody's handing a cup that almost looks like cotton candy and treats to, to a child that looks like maybe they're unsure, uh, but it's a very motherly child card. Usually the six of cups is more just like inner child, but this feels very like mother child. And I know that a lot of my struggle blessing is the great divide between my work and my children, which we've talked about astrologically speaking is like my great um, opposition of my chart to be somebody who works to and is a leader or, or not, not to be. be. That's probably as much as we know. <laughs> um, at least me. That is the question. Um, but that is my great divide. And I'm seeing it here in these cards too, that great divide that is astrology, which has come up for me a few times actually this week about like, how do you be a leader? How do you be a boss? How do you be that Leo Midheaven that you're meant to be and be seen in your career and be strong, but also be a creative, fun mom, which is the other end of my spectrum is how to be fun and how to be free and how to be emotionally nurturing and offer this. And it's like, am I being this? Because I beat myself up that I'm not being that emotionally available, mm -hmm. but maybe am I being that emotionally available? Because this mom looks really emotionally available and the child looks uncertain. So am I delivering that emotional availability in a way that my child recognizes? Like, do I need to like reevaluate that maybe I am available, but it's just getting lost because there is so much going on and there's not this confidence in navigating your life and taking hold of your support system and like really trying to be the best you can be. Am I leading by example by navigating my life in a more controlled way? Does that make me appear to be more emotionally available or at least nurturing? So many questions. Yes. And when we get, see, this is the thing about tarot. So, so often we just want to know, what do I need to do today? What do I need to know? How am I going to get out of this? And we want an answer. But when we want an answer, we haven't given ourselves the opportunity to find the real question, to find the good questions that are deep down that we don't want to ask because it's scary to ask them. And asking the scary questions, asking the hard questions, asking right. the thought-provoking questions of yourself, mm. that's where the good answers lie. That's where the true right. answers lie. That's where your intuition, your subconscious, your inner knowing, right. your higher self. Awareness. That is where that lies in the good questions. Mic drop. Boom. Wow. Oh my gosh. We need help. We is it because you anointed me? We, yeah. We, we, need a, <laughs> we need a podcast the intervention. Spells. No, we don't. <laughs> What? It was like a lot. It was really good. It, yes, yes, it was. If you don't feel uplifted after no, listening I do. to this yeah, episode no. of Magic on the Inside podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but this is like, usually I get in this mode like by myself and you riding the wave with me there. It's maybe the scent you put on me because all I can smell. It's like in my neck. I put a smell on but you. you. Did, don't make me sing it again. No one wants that. And now you're mine. No one wants me singing. I could sing it in a weird voice. I put a spell on you, and now you're mine. <laughs> that's better than mine. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of this. Like, everybody just stopped listening and gave us zero stars on iTunes. If you're going to do that, you just go write the zero stars yourself. You're not doing anybody any favors by telling the world how much you hate us. So, there you go. You know what, though? You are, you know, you are not everybody's cup of tea. I actually read something and I don't mean you specifically. I mean, like, you as a collective. Um, I read something the other day that if you're liked by everybody, you're doing something wrong. Like, if everybody just thinks that you're fabulous and wonderful and lovable, that, like, something's missing. Mm. And that it's okay that some people dislike you. And that's probably the best thing that you can do for yourself. Is yeah, no, be your true that, self and realize people won't like you. Yeah, I mean. It's so true. I think I have really thrived in my life no, knowing and realizing that I'm not for everybody and that the people that do love me deserve the, the equal love back. Yeah. Yeah. So the people that are accepting of you are the people that deserve your attention, your attention and your space. All right. 
folks, ask more questions Thanks. with your tarot cards. If this is a topic that's interesting to you, number one, keep an eye out for our tarot coach program. It's amazing whether or it's not really you, well, if you want to be a service provider, if you already are like a massage therapist, a Reiki practitioner, a, an intuitive, um, a life I don't know, a life coach. If you are a, I don't know, a nanny, a babysitter, a teacher, like anybody who talks to people, this class will be, it's so, so good. Or if you just want to work with yourself in a different way, it's brilliant for that as well. But we have our intentional tarot class, which is free. They're two different things. Uh, an intentional tarot is happening right around the corner. So register for that. Right. And you can, real quick, you can see why pulling cards and asking a question could be confusing. Because if I pulled a card, why am I on the struggle bus? And I pulled the six of wands and it was victory and you're saving the day. I'd be like, how does that make me on the struggle bus? Yeah. Like how, you see how that could be confusing? And then why, when you leave it open to ask yourself questions, yeah. you get more yeah. from the card pull. Because how does the six of wands make me on the struggle bus? Right. Yeah. See what I mean? Ask more questions. Asking questions. All right, y'all. That's it for today. That's it. Yeah. So we'll see you in Intentional Tarot. It's yes. free. Register. Do it. Tell your friends. Do it. Do it. Okay. <laughs> and then until next time, we hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day. Go ahead. Bye.